Hello, welcome to the Wallace Collection, where among the old masters we've gathered nine eager artists, all hoping to create their own masterpiece today. And they're a thoughtful bunch. One of them paints his nightmares, others are inspired by vegan activism, and even by Freudian psychoanalysis. Do people still do Freudian psychoanalysis? They still need it. Welcome to a brand spanking new series of Portrait Artist of the Rear, year 2019. <laughs> Over the next 10 weeks, some of Britain and Ireland's most talented artists will be challenged to paint a portrait in only four hours. I've got a lot to do, and I'm approaching the point where I usually mess it up. But not just any portrait. Their surprise sitters will be some of the UK's most beloved... Hello. Nice to meet you. Glamorous. I didn't know whether to shake your hands or kneel before you and pledge my allegiance. And quite frankly, massive celebrities. I'm moving house. Would you come and heft a few sofas? <laughs> Can't go wrong with looking at that for four hours. <laughs> this is really scary, this bit. Wow. I was promising myself not to say wow. <laughs> oh, my God. She's like a new girl group. It does make me look quite regal. Prince Ashley. King, king. King, sorry, king. excuse me. <laughs> In front of an eagle-eyed audience, the artists must keep their cool... Oh, calm down. ..and prove their talent. I'm happy at the moment, but that could change with one brush stroke. All for the chance to win a life-changing prize, a £10,000 commission to paint global singing icon Sir Tom Jones for the National Museum of Wales. But they must impress our demanding judges. Independent curator Kathleen Soriano. Award-winning artist Taishan Scherenberg. And art historian Kate Bryan. When I was practicing, I was doing it like half the time. Like... Oh, good. Well, we'll have two today then, please. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So who will have the focus? You say that the painting sort of tells you when it's done. But, but I don't know how to listen. Ah. <laughs> to secure a place in the semi-final. I'm gonna have to paint a little bit faster. It's really crunch time. It's like his face is emerging from a wall of custard. <laughs> of today's nine hopeful artists, four are professional. Dorian Radu, Yevgen Nahirny, Jeff Harrison, and Chris Williams. I've done a few extra portraits. In fact, I did put some notices up to say I free portraits in the village hall, but uh, I had two takers. <laughs> and five are amateur. Suzanne Lagarde, Sophia Campbell, Mike Tucker, Kelly Frank, and Eric Whitehead. I've never painted a famous person from life. I mean, I've only ever done drawings from photos, so. I am uh, terrified. <laughs> Before the challenge begins, the judges inspect the artist's self-portraits. Hello. Hello. Hello it's wall time. Mm -hmm. And this rather beautiful portrait to start with. Yes, it's full of sensitivity and real observation. What I like about it is a sense of looking at herself as a different person. Because the eyes aren't engaging, it's like she's decided to investigate herself. And here's someone else avoiding our gaze. She's given herself this pink aura, which almost makes it look like it's got this otherworldly spiritual element to it. It is enchanting. You get the feeling she's unapologetic about her disability and actually she's showing it's part of her identity and she's using it very cleverly in manufacturing a very complex portrait, which is very powerful. I'm really struck by this atmospheric, apocalyptic yellow sky. It's a bit like um, a character in a video game of some kind mm. that's moving forward on his quest to find a million golden eggs. <laughs> <laughs> what? grabbed our attention was the open-ended narrative of this schoolboy who has had something terrible happen to him, but has got a kind of a pride in it or the defiance. So to this glamour puss. It's quite joyful and playful at the same yeah. time and catches a sense of their spirit. Now a bit of Jan van Eyck, the man in the red turban. I love this. I think we were so taken with this art historical reference, but also the work that it has taken to conjure these fabrics, which is so well done. 
What I really like about this work is that it raises loads of questions. I want to know why she left certain bits unfinished. Why are the socks still showing the drawing? Why is one of the eyes just not visible? And now this gent scowling down at us. Who's the daddy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love the treatment of the rough jeans, the old leather of the belt, the way his stomach hits yeah. the T-shirt. It's fantastic. Yeah. Also, that beard looks like it's got his own ecosystem. <laughs> <laughs> These artists may have a gift for depicting themselves, but how will they manage when painting the portrait of a famous sitter? Artists, your sitter today spent the 80s in a punk rock band. Since when, she's become a respected restaurateur, broadcaster and TV chef. Please welcome the delectable Andy Oliver. From musical roots, Andy forged a successful career in television and radio. These days, when she's not hosting the BBC's Great British Menu, she's busy running her award-winning restaurant in North London. I'm great. I'm excited. What a sight. The red dress the and this background. Yellow. How beautiful. That colour's amazing. Another one of my favourites, red and yellow. And I bought my You've got the red shoes, too. And a red fan. This was an accident, actually. It was just in my bag. Well, it's you know. very well put together. Anything you're looking for particularly? Do you want a flattering portrait? Well, or... obviously. Yeah, OK. Yeah. You hear that? Yeah. Um, no, I just think, hopefully, there'll be some connection between you and me. Other than that, I'm just... I'm really intrigued. Artists, your sitter today is a fine English actor who starred on screens large and small. Please welcome the ever-charming Matthew Good. <laughs> Matthew has starred in everything from Hollywood blockbusters such as The Imitation Game to the award-winning television drama The Crown. Welcome. Thank you very much. Oh. Royalty. Lord Snowden, you played Lord Snowden. I did. We, we Bit did of a, a rogue, of wasn't he? He was sort of very charming and also at the same time awful. But really fun to play. You've got to sit for four hours. I know. I was saying to people earlier on, I hope I don't fall asleep this afternoon. Um, I'm not very good when my head goes down. Artists, your sitter today belongs to the tradition of great British classical actors. It's the magnificent Geraldine James. <laughs> From Oscar-winning film Gandhi to Netflix hit Anne with an E, Geraldine's prolific acting career of four decades has earned her an OBE for services to drama. Welcome to your home today. Thank you. Now, how are you feeling? A little bit trepidatious, I have to be perfectly honest with you. It's an interesting one, isn't it? Because you'll be studied intently. I know. But you won't be doing anything. And it's just me. I'm not a character. I don't have a costume. I don't have any lines. Geraldine has sat down like that. Is there any particular way you want her to sit? I say anything comfortable, maybe not This is not actually so astonishingly leg. comfortable. Okay. I'm a little bit worried about that. Do you want me to not be crossed? Other people have commented they cross their legs, they get cramp. Oh, okay. Well, we'll see, shall we? Okay, we'll risk it. <laughs> Where do you want Andy to look? I wouldn't mind if you tilted your head slightly to the left, somewhere well, sort along. Of that kind of way. Does that, does that work for you? That, that works for me. Okay. That's Great. Fine. Good luck. Artists, I hope you have everything you need. Canvas, paint, brushes, and a famous sitter. You have four hours to complete your portrait. Good luck, everyone. Your time starts now. Each artist has his or her own way of starting a portrait. Some like to break the ice with their sitter. She had a late night, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a photo of you if that's okay. Yeah, that okay? Of Perfect. I might take more throughout the day, but that'll do. Whatever you need to do. While others like to launch straight in. Kelly, a lovely start. It feels like a very traditional way of starting painting. Usually I start with charcoal, but I think that becomes quite rigid, so using the brush and the paint straight away makes it a bit more fluid. A passionate amateur artist, Kelly Frank previously made it to the heats of Portrait Artist of the Year 2018. 
Since then, she's developed her style, which now incorporates a unique feature. Tell us about your missing left eye and your self-portrait. I was quite intrigued. I think that's becoming a bit of a trademark of mine. Um, I think when you paint someone, they show you things, but they also hide some things. That's what that one eye trait is trying to do. In my, you show something, but you also hide something. And I think okay. that's part of the mystery of the painting. So where's the mystery today? I think the eye would be something that I can leave out. Nice start. Thank, Thank you. If I dive straight into painting, I tend to make mistakes. So I thought I'd start with a sketch and then I probably won't refer to this drawing when I do the painting, but it's a good way for me to get familiar with his face before I commit to the canvas. A professional artist, Jeff Harrison painted his submission in 40 hours. Having recently become a parent, he chose to depict himself as he remembers his own father looking when he was growing up in the north of England. Well, I'm very glad you're here, Geoffrey, because you are a Stockport man yes. and I am Stockport woman. Yes. So, so we grew up very near each other, but yeah. separated by several decades. Well, early on, you got the sketch. Yeah, I'm a big fan of drawing. It's integral to my practice. Um, so I do what I call clandestine drawing in cafes where people aren't aware that I'm drawing them, so I have to be very quick. So. I, I do a lot of practice of that most days. Do you do it under the table or behind the coffee cup? <laughs> no, people are usually looking at their computers or their phones, so you've got sketchbooks full of drawings of people. The Stockport sketches? Stockport sketches, yeah. Dorian, how are you doing? Quite good. Wow, you've really hit the ground running. Great Thank likeness you. already. Thank you so much. I like to paint instinctively. So I just started with a feature that I think dictates the proportions. That was the nose in this case. And after that, I just build it up. It's like his face is emerging from a wall of custard. <laughs> Dorian Radu is a professional artist from Romania. His self-portrait is a reference to Jan van Eyck's 15th century painting, Man in a Red Turban. He balanced a towel on his head for eight hours to complete it and it seems his many talents don't end there. You haven't always been an artist, is that right? Not always, yeah. What did you do before you were an artist? Hip-hop dancing. You're a hip-hop dancer? A hip-hop dancer. Um, it's quite a different character. As a painter, you really want to just focus. As a dancer, you just gather all the energy from all the people around you. It's two different sides. So as the day goes on, the energy starts to flag. Are we going to see a bit of hip-hop dancing from you? Well, I'm not sure. Can it, we please it, see some hip-hop dancing? It depends you? if it goes well. <laughs> yeah, I'm <might>. Okay. <laughs> Artists never know how difficult their challenge may be when presented with a surprise celebrity sitter. But today, there seems to be a case of the stars aligning. Well, I was hoping to make the painting very saturated, contrast-heavy, really colourful. So having this bright yellow background with the model with the bright red dress is perfect. 21-year-old Eric Whitehead is studying a foundation course at London Fine Art Studios. Like the celebrities he portrayed from photographs when he was younger, he wanted to create a submission with sparkle. You've got a very contemporary feel in your self-portrait. Well, people often describe my work as like idealistic or like kind of glamorous, um, which it's the glasses. I don't... <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> now, what's this about? You're using your fingers to paint. I just feel like I'm better at smoothing things out and blending with my fingers. So, by the end of the day, these will be filthy. Yes. Good. <laughs> that bodes well, doesn't it? The artists are one hour into their challenge. Broadly, I'm happy. I feel that like there's a sense of him in it, so I'm OK. Yeah, I'm feeling good. It's coming along. I'm enjoying it a lot. I'm still kind of a little bit terrified just because of, like, time and, yeah, that's, that's time. Basically, yeah, that's, that's basically it. <laughs> I think I need to adjust my colours because the light is changing a lot, so it seems that these colours might be wrong. Hey, 
It's okay, the light is changing. So the whole shading on his face is totally different. And yeah, just, just coping with that is challenging. So I'm just gonna wing it. Vying for a place in the semi-final, nine artists are painting Andy Oliver, Geraldine James, and Matthew Good. An hour into their four-hour challenge, and one artist is only just making his first brush strokes. Hello, Mike. Hello. You had us all worried. I didn't think you could do any painting. Probably not my smartest idea, but if you get the structure wrong in the beginning, no amount of painting can rescue that. A fine art graduate from Hertfordshire, Mike Tucker is a deeply introspective artist whose submission depicts an apocalyptic world, which was inspired by an image that came to him in a dream. What would you be doing today if you weren't here painting Andy? What's a typical um, day I'd, for you? I'd be in prison. You'd be in prison? Yes. Are you on day release? <laughs> no, I, I work in prison. Oh, I see, you yes. work in prison. Yes. What do you do? Um, I'm an admin okay. staff. In a sort of very hacky way, do you feel art is a way yeah. out of the mental prison? Um, yeah. Is there any um, merit to that at um, all? I, I suppose so. I mean, it, it, you can be cliched about it, but um, yeah, I, I guess so, yeah. Um, well, I will leave you to it. You're doing great work. Thank you. I've got a lot more done than I thought I would have at this stage. I tend to rush the painting just because I'm impatient, just applying as much paint as possible. <laughs> 21-year-old Sophia Campbell is an art student from Belfast. After completing her university project on the works of Frida Kahlo, she was inspired to paint a self-portrait for the first time, impressing the judges with her technique. You strike me as someone who sort of comes at the painting in a relatively responsive way. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just making up as I go along in terms of this, <laughs> like I just started and then that's how it's going to go. And so how do you feel about time? It would be easy to assume that what you do can be quite quick. When I was practicing, I was kind of doing it in like half the time. Like, so like Ooh. two hours, I was happy with what I had done. Oh, good. Well, we'll have two today then, please. Well, <laughs> yeah. It's not just the sitter the artists must think about. This year, the judges have placed them against backgrounds that reference different periods or movements in art history. Kathleen, theme of the day. I'm taking you to France. Good. Late 19th century, looking at Impressionists, post-Impressionists. So I associate that with sunshine, the countryside. Perfect. Sunshine, sunflowers, and we've also looking at pointillism, okay. which is connected to Impressionism. So what's going on here with this pixelated image? Well, at around the time that the Impressionists and the post-Impressionists were happening, we also had the arrival of photography. So this bunch of artists were really the first artists who had to deal with this completely new medium, and the image there is a reference to the very first portrait photograph. How's Matthew getting on as a sitter? A bit sleepy. A bit sleepy. The thing is, he is, like me, the father of young children, so I can't begrudge him no. 40 winks. I might go and join him. I sit <laughs> on his lap and have a kit myself. Lovely picture. Can I just say, as a future warning to all sitters, don't cross your legs. Although I, although I actually found out they're only doing my upper half. Jesus. How are you, my love? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it just looks a bit funny right now. <laughs> Ty, behind us, there's a tribute to Van Gogh. And his love of yellow. It's a very particular yellow. It's chrome yellow, and it really takes me to the heat and warmth of south of France. It's a wonderful colour. Yes, it's beautiful. And with our fabulous sitter, Andy, it's just a perfect juxtaposition. I mean, she's wearing this beautiful blood-red dress. She's got this lovely shaped head, and um, it gives them a lot to work with. Colour for me is important all the time. I mean, I think in terms of colour when I'm making food and when I'm thinking about work, so I walked in and I saw this yellow and I was just thrilled. Kate, the set behind us, what's going on there? 
Here we've got pointillism, so this fantastically almost scientific moment in art history where they're using colour theory to help compose the picture out of lots of little coloured dots. Geraldine seems to be a very dedicated, conscientious sitter. Yeah, she's very graceful and she's got a lovely air about her. And I think they're lucky to have an actor because she is projecting something for them. It's surprisingly more comfortable than I'd expected. It took a while to get used to people milling around and looking. I felt a bit like a penguin at a zoo for a while, which is very interesting. It may seem odd for an actor to be uncomfortable with being looked at, but no stranger, perhaps, than an artist enjoying an audience while they paint. I'm still a student, so I'm used to uh, work in a room full of other painters. I love it. Suzon Lagarde is an amateur artist from France. Although painting from life is a big part of her studies at London's Art Academy, she feels it's not merely observation that informs an artist's choice of colour. So, Susan, you've got a lovely sort of light palette here, really more vibrant, say, than in your self-portrait. Yeah, which, yeah, which is quite dark. It's muddy almost, it is, isn't it? it is. So what makes you feel that you want to deal with Geraldine in a lighter palette? I don't know her, but from what I see, she deserves a lighter palette. OK, OK. <laughs> There's a sort of a haziness to it. Are you going to sharpen those features? Maybe I reach a stage where I feel more confident to sharpen some OK. Area, but I'm not sure yet. Maybe I will keep it open. I've just laid in the background, so I'm getting quite a good sense of energy. Sometimes a portrait can look too flat. The strokes get dated, so the background keeps it fresh for me. At 19 years old, Yevgen Nahirny is already taking commissions and is the youngest in today's heat. He painted his self-portrait over three years and chose to add blood to his face as a thought-provoking feature. Your submission had a rather mysterious narrative to it. You always try to bring in a narrative. Most definitely. I've made it a trademark of my works. How are you going to tell us a story today? Because it seems so intrinsic to your practice. I'm going to go for deep, dark contrasts. I think the dark contrast really senses you in, and then you start wondering about the person. Um, okay. Hopefully, I'll be able to capture it well. Regardless of age and experience, the pressure of competition can get the better of any of us. Hi, Chris. Hi. How are you doing? Slightly panicky from the beginning. <laughs> You've been panicky been... since you got here? Yeah. OK. Well, no, not since I got here, since I... Since she started painting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chris Williams is a professional artist from Shropshire whose self-portrait took four days. Despite being selected for this competition and Landscape Artist of the Year 2017, just like many great artists before her, she's prone to self-doubt. Love your self-portrait. Okay. You don't sound so convinced. <laughs> no, I'm not. Do you not like it? <laughs> don't you? Well, you're obviously quite critical of your own work. Mm. But that's definitely Matthew. Yes. Yeah. Just keep filling in the details. Oh, yes. Yeah, so it'll, be, it'll be a face when we've finished. <laughs> and how are you? Good. <laughs> the artists have just over two hours remaining. Seems to be going OK. The drawing went quite well. Um, the painting's not going so well. I don't know. Uh, I just can't see it just yet. Maybe I'm just being impatient. I'm not sure. I'm still happy, still uh, excited about what I'm doing. It's an evolving process, and I know I will go through some ugly stages. It could be better, it could be worse. I'm a bit concerned about make it kind of like an illustration. I still want that painterly look. We'll never know until the end, I guess. a bit long. I don't know, I should have spent more time thinking about it, but it's fine, I'm, I'm painting, which is something. <laughs> I'll calm down. The artists are halfway through their four-hour challenge, painting Andy Oliver, Geraldine James, and Matthew Good, whose sitting duty is proving thirsty work. It's a good job they give us gin. 
Whatever their poison, for the judges, the art is intoxicating enough. Halfway time, and I think we've got some cracking pictures here today. Let's run through them. The whole of Geraldine's section work in a quite traditional manner, have all the same sort of composition, and Susan got Geraldine's likeness right from the start. I love the way in which she works with colour, and I really like that sort of haziness, mm. but I want to see something that's resolved at the end. Mm. I don't want something that I've got to sort of muddle my way through. So tell me about Jeff painting Matthew. Jeff's self-portrait was a spectacular mm. feat of detail, but he's clearly thought about how to create a kind of shorthand which allows him to do it in the time. I think it'll be better looking as the day gets on because there's something about the way he puts the texture down mm -hmm. that helps the character come through. And Chris? I think she puts herself down and actually the drawing is a bit wrong, mm. but if you embrace that stylization, she could get Matthew in her own way because yeah. she's got a very distinctive way of putting paint on. I think it's about confidence. Working next to Chris is Dorian. Dorian has a, just an incredible facility to capture lightness. And the lightness mm. is so good. Mm. I don't want him to spoil it. I fear he could. Oh, I don't know. I think we need something else. I need to see some other kind of narrative because it could be a bit boring. What about Andy's section? I think all of the artists in Andy's section have really dealt with colour. Mm. You know, because they're putting the background in and they all want the dress because yeah. you can't sort of ignore that fantastic celebration of colour. And I think Eric's doing a really fantastic job. It's a sort of an idea of Andy with a bit of that sort of flamboyance and, you know, glam thrown in. But he told us that's what he wanted to do. He said, I want to do a glamorous picture. Well, his submission was very glamorous. Yeah. I'm really impressed by what he's doing. Picking a semi-finalist from nine artists is never easy. And today, there's a tenth. Hello. How's it going? Who's this? Is this Geraldine? Yeah. I think you might be able to put that in competition. I'm not old enough yet. I'm oh, is that six right? Now. You, oh, you're only six. Okay. Maybe when I'm ten or eleven. Yeah, or eight. Maybe. Yeah. I reckon you could win it when you're eight. I'd love to see a bit of me in the paintings. If I'm acting, I'm looking at myself in character, so I see myself as another person. So I'm quite interested to see if I recognise the sort of inner me, if you like. It's very, I'm interested, I'm intrigued. I'm slightly petrified because I don't think one can be subjective about a portrait of their own. But still, I'm, I marvel at art, really. It's like alchemy for me. It's like fairly inexpensive materials that, that people with ability can turn into gold. It's a beautiful thing to be part of, and uh, it's very interesting to have four hours to let your mind wander. And then I realised my mind doesn't really wander that far. <laughs> I'm literally sitting here thinking about hard goat's cheese and, and a roasted radish oil salad. <laughs> this is what's happening in my brain. Capturing the eyes is one of the most important aspects of any portrait. Right. Oh, her eyes are not brown anymore. OK. But for some artists, it's not about how they're captured, but when. I think the next step is to tackle those eyes. I've been tiptoeing around, uh, but now that I have a structure I'm happy with, I can try to work on those eyes. I tend to do the detail of the eyes very, very late in a painting because otherwise I think they can overpower the whole. His eyes are, I think, his key part, so I kind of want to get that really sharp. Eric, the eyes have just come out. Do you <laughs> save them to the last usually? Yeah. Why is that? I want to make sure that I capture the likeness without the eyes. I mean, you can tell that someone is still them if they're wearing sunglasses. So <laughs> that's, kind inter of... that's interesting because yeah. usually, you know, people always do the eyes first because they think the likeness spreads out from that. But I think you're always kind of good because you're really forcing yeah. yourself to get everything else right first. Basically, yeah. So yeah. is that done then? I'd like to say that the face is at a good stage, but there's still a few other things that I need to bring to that stage, okay. I guess. So, you know, the chest, the dress, the background. So where's everything else? Everything <laughs> else, yeah, exactly. Okay. You'd think the pressure of a time challenge means focus, but for one artist, there's more to expressing his creativity than just paint. Dorian, you look to me like you're finished. Are well, you finished? I still have a few fiddles to do. OK. Do you have time to dance? Do I have time to dance? I'm not sure how to do it without music, though. I could do I'm a human beatbox in my spare time. 
Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Should we do it now? What sort of? I can't actually. I'm not just, a human. Just being. do whatever. Okay. I think he comes out of this better than you do, Stephen. That was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I enjoyed that. <laughs> right, now go back to your painting. Oh, thank you. <laughs> the artists have just half an hour left. I've blended everything together. I've got a nice sense of the background. All I've really got to do now is pull it together. I've got to change the bottom of the nose a bit, firm up the mouth, put in the background, put in the suit. Not a lot. I'm just trying to add in, add in little bits of details, like a nice gold chain running down her face, just to make it pop. I think I'm pleased with the eyes. Uh, I don't want to refine them much more. I might check the last time by the end, but no, I think it's better to leave them as they are, hopefully. It's going all right, but I still feel like I've got quite a lot to do, and I'm also aware that I'm approaching the point where I usually mess it up, so i just got to be really careful. Nine artists are nearing the end of their four-hour challenge, painting television chef Andy Oliver and actors Matthew Good and Geraldine James. I think I'm running a bit behind. I might have to lose some detail. I think the eye would be something that I can leave out. I feel a little bit up against it. There's not much time left. I think I might just concentrate on a couple of small details that might just lift it a bit. Definitely I won't prioritise details. It's easy to be drawn into details and to forget um, the whole picture. So by stepping back, I'm trying to look at my painting and fix what needs to be fixed. Dorian, do you, do you find that you sometimes have to just paint quicker? Or you suddenly, you know, you're like, oh my god, the <laughs> like, oh, I've got to finish this. I might start to freak out. <laughs> Artists, you have ten minutes left. I've got just little touches that that's all I can do now. I'm not entirely happy with most of it, to be fair. <laughs> it might not be as bad as I think. It might be worse, I don't know. I feel like it was really going well. It's just that I feel like I just don't have enough time to finish things off. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed about that. We have to stop at some point. So as long as I'm happy with what I do, the rest of it is out of my hands. I just let the universe decide. And in this case, the universe are the judges. Artists, your four hours are up. Please stop painting and step away from your easels. <laughs> Andy Oliver, Geraldine James and Matthew Good will now come face to face with their artist portraits. Andy, what a great sitter you were. Was I? You were engaging, you chatted, you oh. were, you know, you were a delight. It's a wonderful thing to take four hours and just be. And the reward for those four hours of just being are three portraits oh that God. we're about to show you. Artists, please turn your easels. Ah. <laughs> Made my feet go. Yeah. <laughs> You're amazing. Wow, these colours are brilliant. This is why you've all been going on about the colour in the way that you... It really is brilliant, isn't it? Oh, look at her. She's a little bit narky, isn't she? <laughs> I really think you've caught something of me, particularly in the eyes something there. something going on there, isn't There's there? There's something going on there. I think it's wonderful. It's quite strong, but it's when I'm really caught in a thought. Right. Have you even got the chain and everything? Yeah. This one looks like I'm about to start laughing. Well, so, you spent a lot of the day laughing, didn't you? <laughs> I did do that. You did. I did do that, because you've got that in the eyes, really caught brilliantly. So there we go. That's the three. You have to pick <sighs> one of these to take home with you. Oh. 
Ah, uh, okay. This one. Thank you so much. Matthew, you're a free man. Thank you very much. How has it felt? Yeah, really good. I'm really excited to see the final product. OK, well, artists, it's time to turn your easels around. Very good. <laughs> Seriously. Congratulations. Yeah, amazing. I really like the unfinished quality to it. I think you've done it very successfully. I mean, it's definitely me. <laughs> Make no question about it. Chris, I think you've done a great job. I like the fact you can see, because I'm quite ruddy in the face normally, but it's brilliant, really, really good. Dwayne, you got the scowl. I think that's why these bits, I really do have that, but I think it's when I concentrate. That's how it is. I think it's really successful. Well done. So come, the choice is yours. Um, I'm going to go with this one. Yeah. Congratulations. I think you've done it. I think you've done it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was promising myself not to say wow. <laughs> it's absolutely the only thing to say. And they all look like me. They are all definitely you. I'd spot me a mile off. Kelly, well done. Thank you. Are you pleased with it? <laughs> I am, I am. I think I could have done with a second eye. Yes, I, I was debating that one. Amazing. Great, Kelly, thank you. This is all wonderful. I love all this muted. Beautiful. And that's definitely me. There's a definite character in that eye and slightly cruel eyebrow. <laughs> it's good. Right. There can be only one. No, 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 no. Yes, no. you have to pick one to take home with you. What do you think? I have no idea. I mean, they're all so different. It's they're all completely chalk and different. Cheese. And I am going to go with Susan. Thank you. While the artists take a well-earned break, the judges take a look at the portraits produced today. I think Mike ended up creating something that is closer to caricature in a way. Isn't the yellow great, though? Yeah, it's very dynamic, and she was dynamic. I think Sophia's done a really lovely job here. I agree with you, but the application of the paint, I find dry and thin. Having said that, Andy's there in a yeah. sort of regality, so she has caught that. I love the way Eric played with these densities of colours and he's got that sort of jaunty angle which really conveys the attitude that Andy had. Dorian's given us a traditional, well-composed, realistic portrait and then at the same time there's a strangeness to it. It feels a bit like a poster ad. I'm surprised Chris sort of suffered so much today. She seems to be really mm. worried. But for me, it's really a very beautiful painting with great paint application and a lovely palette. I think Jeff started with a really fantastic drawing. It's got a presence. And I think he found mm. a very, very effective way of mm. getting this solid bit of painting down without all the time that he took on his submission. It was quite apparent from early on that Yevgen's drawing was wrong, but um, it's a gritty bit of realism, and we should uh, applaud it for that. I'm really pleased that Suzanne didn't over-muddy the palette, and we've got this sort of haziness, which part of me really likes, but mm. I want a little bit more sharpness. Having said that, it's got great light, hasn't it? It's got mm. it's very luminous. I see Kelly wrestling with the artist that she wants to become, because there are some bits that, that are just lovely, but mm. this treatment of the eye, you know, she's going for this enigmatic, but what we're getting is more puzzling. And I mm. think that the end result doesn't do her justice as an artist. Before choosing today's winner, the judges pick a short list of three. Oh, it's tricky today. I think we're going to need a long think, because they're all competing on a really similar level. Incredibly difficult. Um, so much hangs on this decision. I, I really think we need to think about it just a little bit longer. Yeah. yeah. Artists, thank you for your enthusiasm and your hard work. We've enjoyed watching you all day long. After much consideration, the judges have selected their shortlist of three artists. And the first artist is Suzanne Lagarde. <laughs>
And the second artist is Chris Williams. The third artist to be shortlisted, Jeff Harrison. Commiserations from the rest of you, which isn't that we don't appreciate your talent and commitment. Thank you very much. The whole experience was really fun and I literally couldn't stop smiling, but it was very tiring. And last night I didn't really get a good night's sleep, so that's one of the first things that I'm thinking about when I get home. To pick a semi-finalist, the judges consider the artist's submissions as well as today's portraits. How hard was it today? Really hard. I think that there was a pretty level playing field. And I think between mm. the nine of them today, the margins are probably the smallest margins we've ever had. What did you go for in Susan's portrait of Geraldine? There's a luminosity to the portrait, which is very engaging and it works as a whole. And I think looking at these two together, that you can see that Suzanne's not a one trick pony. She did something different today than her submission. So that gives us sort of confidence in her as an artist. And Chris? What I like about her painting is the sense that every surface on Matthew's face has been observed and a decision has been made. And yes, there's something off with the likeness, but she's a wonderful painter, a wonderful yeah. putter on of paint. And we know that she's naturally self-deprecating and unsure about things. But, you know, she did really well today. And what about Geoffrey? Well, we just absolutely love his submission. And then he turned up today and said, right, I've got to do that in a totally different way. Mm -hmm. And he found an equivalent. Actually, I think for me, it's, it's almost perfect. I just want to see a bit more liveliness mm -hmm. in the eyes. There's a wit and a personality in his self-portrait that he didn't quite find yeah. today. But the submission took a very long time. And it's wonderful to have the self-portraits here to remind us of what they mm -hmm. can do on their own terms, in their own time. But the problem we've got now is how to decide between these three artists. Suzanne, Chris, Jeff, you all displayed amazing talent and we're enormously impressed, but only one can go forward. The artist that the judges have chosen as today's winner captured a sensitive portrait and showed an ability to effectively adapt their style. And that artist is... Jeff Harrison. Um, it's a bit unbelievable, to be honest. The standard of the other guys is amazing. So I kind of hoped, but didn't really expect. And so to have my name called out, yeah. What Jeff did today was special. It was a sensitive piece of painting. We loved the way he handled the fabric. And the face was delicate and interesting. It's a beautiful little painting. And if you combine that with that fantastic submission, it's an artist that we feel can just step up and just excite us for the next stage. Stop all the tracks. I am looking forward to doing it all over again, even though it's been quite a challenge and it's been quite difficult. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm really looking forward to having another go.